everyone, it's Melinda, and today is a special day. We're going to be looking at Titanite, which is also known as Sphene. Um, it's extra special because all of the specimens in my collection have been, you know, collected right here in Ontario by rock hounds um, at a variety of locations that we actually uh, visit on both of my May tours. Uh, so it's always exciting to see things uh, that you can collect yourself, and these are a little bit more difficult to come across, so... Uh, making them even more, you know, kind of exciting. Um, <clears throat> so titanite or sphene is a calcium titanium nesosilicate mineral uh, with trace impurities of iron and, and aluminum. Uh, also, sometimes there are commonly rare earth metals present in its chemistry. Titanite is named for its titanium content, obviously. Um, but its alternative name, Sphene, was named for the Greek term Sphenos, which means wedge. And you'll see today that that's kind of the typical uh, shape of the crystals of this mineral. Um, Sphene was actually the more popular term for this mineral prior to 1982. It wasn't until that time that the IMA adopted the official name Titanite and decided to discredit Sphene. But you can still see Sphene frequently used, um, especially throughout Europe. Um, it, it persists and is kind of the more prevalent name still for faceted titanite gemstones, um, or any even kind of like a transparent crystal uh, form. But here in Ontario, we go by the now proper name titanite. And it can vary in color, uh, including reddish brown, gray, yellow, uh, green, and red. And our mixture here is sort of brownish, reddish, um, and has been nicknamed Cherry Titanites, which I really love because I can, you know, at first glance they do just kind of look like a black amphibole or a brown amphibole, but when you look really close there is this gorgeous deep redness inside of them, which um, I'll show you in just a moment. Um, so titanite is used for a variety of things, but pigments is one of them. And like I said, it's also a gemstone. It's usually more so with the ones that are the shade of chartreuse, like yellow green. Um, but sometimes they use the brown and black ones as well. Um, and the hue of the titanite crystals depends on the iron content. So lower iron content would cause green and yellows, where higher ones would cause red, browns, and blacks. Um, so first I'm going to show you uh, one that I purchased from a fellow rock hound. It's my largest, you know, single crystal. To kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at when I show you the ones that are still in the matrix. There we go. And you can see it's it's a broken piece, but you can see that shovel formation, that wedge formation that is really typical for this stone, as well as the extreme glossiness. Titan is actually known for its high luster and dispersion rate. Um, and that results in a transparent titanite crystals being brilliant, whereas opaque titanite crystals like these are highly reflective. Incredibly reflective. Like, this has not been polished at all. This has been pulled straight out of the earth, and this is what it's like. <laughs> it's wonderful. So this one is labeled as being uh, rock-hounded within Ontario, but not more specific than that. So I'm not sure exactly which location it was pulled from, but it's quite typical of, of what we would see at the locations we visit. Here's a little rough one from the Torrey Hill location here in Ontario. Can you see how incredibly glossy that is? And it's rough, but it was trying to make that wedge shape. The location where this one was pulled from is called Titanite Hill, because Titanites can be found there. But it's actually pretty darn difficult to find one. You're not going to find one every single you know, visit out there type thing. Uh, last year on my tours, 
two people found some pieces. Pretty nice pieces, actually, from what I can remember. But that was pretty, you know, exciting. That's an exciting find when you find Titanite. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people will pull out really nicely shaped black amphibole that are quite shiny and uh, declare that they found Titanite. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, everyone wants to find one, right? Because they're a little bit elusive. Um, but they're actually fairly easy to tell apart once you've had one and you've seen how incredibly reflective it is. The reflectiveness of the stone, the glossiness, uh, where it looks like it's already been polished or it's been like given like a resin coating or something like that is really telling um, of, a, of a Titanite. Uh, also that wedge shape that I keep talking about, and also the cherry red color that uh, our Ontario specimens are known for. If you pay really special attention to the cracks, you'll see that redness. Let's see if I can get in there so you can see. Mm. Oh, you can see a little bit of the redness. Not as well as in person, I'm sure. You can see in the cracks. That's like a cherry red color in the cracks. I'll pull up the big one again to show you that. Because this one has really nice red cracks. You can see that. And when you have the stone in person and you look at it really clearly and close up you can see that it is like a brownish red color rather than like a a black amphibole which would be quite quite black oh there's some some red you can see it shows up much more in the cracks Here's another little specimen from the Tory Hill. This one's just a little broken piece off of a Titanite crystal. But I can tell it's Titanite because of that glossiness, because it has the reddishness in it, even though it's not technically a wedge. I can still sort of see the crystal have it and kind of get a sense that it wanted to be a wedge or that it was a wedge at one point. <laughs> there we go. Now these are fun. Uh, this one's from the Tory Hill location as well and it's a, a pretty rough tight night in brown micro clean. These are the micro clean brown microclean crystals which the area is known to have they're not extremely common but I like that little cluster the titanate is down here and you can probably see how glossy and that it does have that little bit of a browny red tinge in comparison to the black that you see around it it is rough but it was certainly trying to be, see underneath? It was trying to be a wedge. <laughs> there we go, and you can kind of see the, red, the redness in it. This specimen, like a couple of these, I actually didn't realize I had a Titanite in it until I brought it back and washed it all up. So that's always an exciting thing to find when you're washing your minerals after a good dig. So on the matrix, this is the titanite right here. And again, you can see that shovel formation. It's just the tip, but still. And you can see how incredibly glossy it is compared to all of the other minerals around it. It's perfectly, perfectly smooth. No striations whatsoever. I'll get closer. There we go. And there's a little bit of cracking down here too that shows off a bit of the redness of these Ontario 
sometimes referred to as cherry type nights. Here's another one right here where my thumb is. Right? How incredibly glossy. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Other things on this matrix, calcite, uh, purple fluorite, we've got apatite here, yellow scapolite, more purple fluorite. It's a cool piece, I like it. Here's a nice apatite crystal right here. Some more titanite here, some more titanite here beside that one. It's a fantastic piece, I love this one. And again, I knew that it had this appetite. I was hunting for appetite, and I saw that. I saw a bit of purple uh, fluorite, and I thought, I'll just throw that in my bucket, you know? And it wasn't until I washed it till I saw these beautiful, shiny titanites. I was so excited. All right, this is a big one. <clears throat> it's from the same location as the last one, Wilberforce, Ontario. And it's right inside that huge green augite. The location is known for beautiful dark green augite crystals and this titanite made its home there. <laughs> it's a heavy one. <laughs> Again, it's got that wedge shape, it's got the gloss, and I'm sure if we got close enough we'd see some little specks of red here and there. I love it. I love the big augite crystal that it's on. And there's appetite right here. Oh, scapolite crystal here. Some scapolite crystals down here. And purple flory, like, ah, oh, just love it. And then you've got that glossy, shiny titanite. Perfect. There we go. And the last one is a tiny little perfect titanite from Eganville, Ontario. And this one was gifted to me by a fellow rock hound. I, you know, he had collected a few and wondered if I had any and I'd only had little ones in matrix and broken pieces so he sent me this tiny little perfect one. <laughs> Lovely. Oh. Amazing. All right, there you go, folks. All of my Titanite, also known as Fiend. Um, beautiful dark brown, red, cherry red Titanites from Ontario. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. <laughs> Bye!